welcome to Build. I'm Rihanna Dillon, and today we are live from London, and I am joined by a very, very special guest, the very talented Emmy and Tony nominated actor, Brian Tyree Henry. <laughs> So we are taking any questions that you might have, so tweet us at Build Series LDN or leave a comment on the video below and we will get to them during this interview. But first, my questions. Ooh, hi, hi, welcome to Build. Thank you for having me. Thank you for We're not just taking us. any questions, just so you know. Like, make sure these questions are like legit. They'll be nice. They'll be <laughs> okay. sweet. They'll be I'm lovely. Like, I don't need people know my blood type. <laughs> <laughs> what is your blood type? I don't know. <laughs> Who does? <laughs> That's ridiculous. So you are here to talk about the hit series Atlanta. Congratulations Thank you. on a fabulous two series, yeah. a third one third in the one pipeline, the way, yeah. which we will get to. For people who don't know about Atlanta, where have you been? Like, uh, first of all, why are we talking? <laughs> uh, no, and um, yeah, tell us a little bit about it. Well, let's see. Atlanta is about uh, these two cousins, uh, one played by me, the other by, I don't know if you heard of this guy named Donald Glover. Uh, <laughs> it's no big deal, this guy. But uh, yeah, it's about these two cousins in Atlanta. One is an up and coming rapper, and you know, the other cousin is trying to manage him, and it's just about all the things that come with that. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of shenanigans that happen. It's a little bit of a comedy of errors going on. That's the two of us there. <laughs> uh, and, and much at a place like this. It's really interesting that episode is much at a place oh, like really? this. Yeah, like we're going. This is when Alfred has to like go and do like things like build and like you know okay. Spotify and things nice. like that. But the it's media. just us trying to figure out how to like you know navigate through this newfound success for him as Paperboy. So tell me a bit about your character. Tell me about Paperboy. Well, <laughs> uh, Alfred is. Um, I don't know. He's a self-made man. Uh -huh. I guess you can put it that way. He sells drugs. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, he's born and raised in Atlanta. That's where he's from, uh, you know, and he likes to delve in music every once in a while. Mm -hmm. And then he re releases this single, Paperboy by Paperboy. And it blows up, man. It becomes this phenomenon in the city, and, and, and everyone uh, kind of wants a piece of him. Everyone is like, oh, you're blowing up. You know, put me on. We see that you're doing, like, incredibly great. And, you know, he is not one to take success very easily. He doesn't like people really like approaching him that mm -hmm. way. He's got a bit of a short fuse, but he has the biggest heart of anybody I've ever seen. He's really funny. Um, he will choke you if necessary. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, I mean, he's just uh, very protective of his family, you know, and uh, I don't know, I love Alfred. He's one of my favorite characters I've ever played. Oh, that's very interesting. We, yeah. We're actually gonna see a little bit of Alfred now, so, you know, you can make up your own mind. Let's have, a little, <laughs> let's have a little sneak peek of just okay. how wonderful Alfred is. Okay, cool. <laughs> good. Of all the scenes. <laughs> of all the scenes and episodes to play, he played that one. That's I crazy. love how disgruntled he is. There's so much going on in that episode, man. I so mean, tell like, me, so, okay, so what is going on with Paperboy then? That's from season two, episode five. Yeah, Barbershop, mm -hmm. um, written by the amazing Stephanie Robinson. Uh, she had this idea because uh, this season... Uh, Alfred has to show a lot more restraint. Mm -hmm. You know, like, the first season, it was okay for him to kind of, like, you know, show his sides of, like, if he feels like he's been mistreated, he can, like, slap you, yeah. you know, shoot you, do the things that he does. But this season, he's got a lot more notoriety, so he has to be mm -hmm. very careful. And this is an episode where he goes to his barber, Bibby, mm -hmm. that he's known forever. And now Bibby knows that he's made it, made it a little bit, so... Bibby is doing everything he can to not give me my haircut because he's just like, yeah, you're good. You're like, you're Hollywood now. So this whole episode is like him dragging me around the entire city <laughs> with half a haircut. <laughs> and I'm not going to like leave you, bro, because you're the only one who knows how to cut my hair. So there's a lot that happens in that episode. <laughs> like, there's a lot that goes on, man. Uh, but it was real fun to do. Like, it was... It was a true testament of strength to like, I just remember like, cause Donald directed that episode and like any time that um, anything went on that I didn't think was like right or when I felt like I was being mistreated, I was like, so I can't choke him? He's like, no, you can't touch him. I was like, what about like if I slap him a little uh -huh. bit? Like, he's like, no yeah. man, like you gotta, you gotta maintain this uh, newfound fame. So that, and so literally what you see like that haircut, like literally the whole episode, I'm running around with like this patch of hair, and everyone's looking at me like, are you sick? What's wrong, man? Like, are you a rapper? Like, you look like you should be fresher than that. But yeah. uh, it was fun. It was very hard to do, but it was it was fun. 
So working with Donald then, so not only is he your co-star, he's writing what you're doing sometimes, mm -hmm. and he's also directing you occasionally. Yeah, man. How is that? How does that work? He has clones, which y'all don't know, <laughs> is that like he literally cloned himself. Like it's, it's really ridiculous. That's uh, how he's doing it that's all. That's how he does it. I like, think he's he should get literally behind you right now. Um, <laughs> but like he, uh, I don't know, man. I don't think he sleeps. I don't think that he, you know, when you have like a mind like that and you've got all these uh, ideas and, mm. and things that's going on, you know, I, I don't think that he could rest until they're, they're made and done. So, mm. Uh, yeah, like, it, I'm trying to learn from him, man. He is, like, I, I really do learn from watching Donald a lot, and I feel like we learn from each other uh, because, um, you know, it, everyone on this show, we, we're very close. Like, we're very, we love each other, man. Like, it's, it's really great, and we all kind of influenced each other. And, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. Donald, I don't know. I don't think he's really from this planet. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't really know. That would but make so much sense. It would make a lot more sense, yeah. right? Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, so, yeah. like, uh, but, yeah, you know, it, it's, it's one of the best times in my life that I've had, you know, mm -hmm. being with them. It's really great. How do you think that Atlanta has sort of helped to change the landscape of television? Have you noticed there's been, because it's such a mix of genres and, you know, that's so rich, complex. Have you and noticed? incredibly black, you can say it. It it's is a black. very black show, it's very black which show. I'm very happy about. You know what's really great is that the fact that I'm even sitting here yeah. uh, talking about this show and that I'm looking at this audience just so different, you know, like it's so great. Uh, it means that the stories are what matter. Mm -hmm. It means that like, you know, there is so much more um, that we have in common than we have different, you know, and uh, I think that's really great. Uh, but first of all, it being placed in Atlanta, Atlanta is one of the blackest cities in the country. It's my favorite. I went there for college and it's called the Black Mecca, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And it's like, it's really influenced a lot of the culture that's going on in yeah. entertainment. Like, I remember when I went to college in 2000. It's a long time ago. <laughs> um, uh, the music scene was changing. So, like, that's when Little John was coming up. And, you know, Outkast was doing their thing. And you had Ursher, you know, as we call him, Ursher, um, <laughs> blowing up. And then the TV and film industry started blowing up. Mm -hmm. And now the music industry is back again. I was like, trap rap? Like, are you kidding me? Like, the Migos is everywhere. 21 Savage is great. So it's always reinventing itself. And then for us to join the number with this show, man, it's like, it's, it's unlike anything I've ever seen in my life. So I think what it is is that it's something fresh. You know, it's something fresh about it. And uh, it's stories that I think we've always been waiting for. You mm -hmm. know, there's nothing better than seeing like television that reflects you back to you. If you if you were gonna tell me like when I was 12 years old that I would look up at a billboard and see three black dudes with peaches in their mouths and be like, yo, there's a show. <laughs> like, I, I just would have never believed that at all. So I think it's really great to see that the representation is happening. You know what I mean? Like it's necessary and it's absolutely, absolutely necessary more now than ever. Uh, so I'm really glad that, you know, you know, Fox has given us this opportunity to, to, to tell these stories the way we tell them. Do you think it has changed the way that people perceive Atlanta as well, the show? <laughs> oh, hell yeah, because like, <laughs> and let me tell you something. If we didn't do Atlanta justice, and especially me, mm -hmm. who's playing the character that is from Atlanta, yeah. they will let you know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, Atlanta is not about that inauthent an inauthenticity kind of thing. Is that a word, inauthenticity? Yeah, I want to know. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it was uh, really cool to go back the second season because when we did the first season, you know, I don't think anybody knew what it was going to be, yeah, you know, which I love. And, and then we go back the second season, I'm like, oh, everybody knows we're here, man. Like, <laughs> I couldn't go to the mall like I used to, which was so, it's the only uh. place I get my sneakers. Uh, but it was different, man. It was very different. But my favorite thing about it is that people are happy that it's there. Like, mm -hmm. one of the first things that I hear from fans is thank you. That's so which lovely. Which is, like, the most, like... Does that it make could, you tear up a little bit? I mean, together. you can't really show it to them, you know what I mean? But, like, it, it is, like, it does make me feel like I'm, I'm doing something very important. And, um, yeah, man, I mean, it, it's really cool because it feels like it, it, there's an ownership. It feels like it's not just ours, it's theirs as well, mm -hmm. which it is because there's no way we'd be able to do what we're doing if it wasn't for the people we're doing it for. So, like, yeah, I, I feel like everybody is very happy you know, I haven't been met with anybody that's really tried to come up and, like, check me on anything. And I'm like, let's hope that that never happens. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, man, I feel like it's good because it is part of the culture. It's part mm -hmm. of, it's all, it's all of ours, you know what I mean? And then, so you've, we haven't seen season two here yet. It's yeah, premiering no. on Sunday yeah. um, on Fox. And then, but you have also already been commissioned for season three. Yeah, I just found out on that Friday. That must be incredible. Congratulations. It's great. What yeah. were the celebrations like well, when you found out? Well, it was very out? interesting because we had to do an LA uh, on Friday, our four-year consideration for the Emmys, mm -hmm. and it was the first time that all of us had seen each other in a very long time, so 
one, I was on the carpet and like, there's an interview happening here, an interview there, an mm -hmm. interview there. So Keith is right there and Donald's right there. And as we're talking, all I kept doing was like reaching out during their interviews, just massaging the backs <laughs> of their heads. Like, I miss you so much, guys. Like, it's amazing. Um, and so, you know, like we all found out together, man. And like, it's just, uh, it's just wonderful, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, this is really, it's really great because um, it means that the people want more and the people are satisfied with what we're doing. You and feel like you're being heard, right? Yeah, you know, and it's terrifying at the same time. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't I don't think I've been more tense <laughs> than waiting to hear if uh, we got a season three or not. But then everybody's like, what are you talking about? Of course you got a season three. I was like, you don't know. <laughs> like, don't shows are it. dropping left and right, man. I don't yeah. know. Like, you don't know. So it, it was really nice to know that... Uh, the people want us back, so mm -hmm. it's good. In the media world, it feels like you have to have a million jobs and know how to do them instantly. And yeah. so you, you know, you, you're doing a TV series like Atlanta, and then you've got to go on Broadway and do <laughs> Lobby Hero. Yeah. How does that sort of shift in mindset impact you? It was a total mind-boggling experience because. Um, when I decided to do Lobby Hero and go back to Broadway, I, I really just wanted to be home. Mm -hmm. You know, I live in New York, and uh, I just wanted to be back home and back on the stage. Yeah. You know, I wanted to make sure I didn't get too far away from mm -hmm. what I knew. And um, when I got the opportunity to, one, work with Chris Evans, I was like, are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> yes, Captain man. America. Right, I was like, oh, really? Like, what are you going to do? No, I love him. He's one of my best friends. Um, and Michael Sarah as well. Mm -hmm. And the amazing Belle Powley, uh, who I did White Boy Rick with um, mm -hmm. last year. She's amazing in it. Uh, it was good, you know, because I was like, oh, I do know what I'm doing. Okay, yeah. I do remember. Okay. Yeah, okay, that's stage left. That's downstage. <laughs> uh, that's the fourth wall. So you, know you need what I mean? to know, right? It was crazy. It was like how I had kind of like forgot because I hadn't done stage at that time in like about four or five years. So mm -hmm. I was like, okay. Uh, but it was also great to get the recognition from my peers to say, hey, man, you know, like, you, you just give you a Tony nomination. This is your Tony. Congratulations Tony on your Tony <laughs> nomination. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it was so brilliant. Yeah, it was, uh, it was unbelievable, man. And, you know, the last time I was on stage was when I was doing the Book of Mormon. So that was years ago. And, um, so cool. Yeah, and, so, got and I believe the Book of Mormon is still here. Like, you guys have it here, right? Yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah. So yes. Great. It's Go see it, please, because I get paid from it. Um, <laughs> but, like, uh, it was great. It was. It's really great to know that your mm -hmm. peers see you and they want to give you your big ups, and it was really nice to have that happen. But at the same time, our first preview was the same day as the premiere of Atlanta. Oh, you're joking. So, like, literally oh every week I'm on stage, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. knowing that the show is coming on right <laughs> after I get off stage, and when we closed, it coincided with the finale of Atlanta. I was oh, like, you can't, wow. can't beat that. That I don't know how many people can say that. I don't think anybody can, and I'm happy <laughs> that I could do that. So it was cool. But you've also got some incredible film projects. I think you're yeah. you're literally the hardest working man I've ever I'm met. I'm actually asleep right now. You don't know that. That's how good I am. Doing I was just awfully well. Out. Uh, yeah, I got some great. I got to work with a lot of great artists this year. You know, and, and I thank Atlanta for opening up those doors for like showing out. You know, showing me off that way. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you know, I got a. Uh, uh, what do I have? I have White Boy Rick coming out. Yeah. Directed by Yann Demange and uh, starring Matthew McConaughey, and then I got Widows happening. Got to work with Steve McQueen. So Steve McQueen, this is like his first film since yeah, 12 since years. Yeah, since 12 Years a Slave, and I was like, you sure you want me in this thing, man? Because that's a lot of pressure. Uh, but it's got Viola Davis and Colin Farrell, and you and know, our very own Daniel Kaluuya. And who Daniel, we, we oh play brothers God. in this movie, and like he is really my brother in real life, man. Like I'm so proud of him, and I love him so, uh -huh. so, so much, and. Uh, I can't wait for us to get back, you know, together again to, to do take over the world. Actually, I really um, hope you do. Actually. I, I think we're gonna make a movie about us taking over the world. It'd be great. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and then I got to be in Spider Man uh, into the Spider Verse, which is coming out mm -hmm. playing Spider Man's dad. I love that. Yeah, it's really cool because which means Spider Man is black, you guys. <laughs> uh, so that's great. Um, yeah, man, and uh, Bill and Street you, could talk, you know, with Barry yeah. Jenkins coming up, you know. So tell me about that. So you started working with Barry Jenkins after he got the nomination after. He got the award, he Academy won. Award yeah. for Moonlight. And what you know, was the buzz like then? Moonlight was that? written by a good peer of mine, Terrell McCraney. We, he and I went to Yale together, and I've done like every play that he's ever written. Amazing. So, like, to finally see my homie up there winning his Oscar. I was like, great. And then I got Hotel Artemis that I did uh, with my best friend, Sterling K. Brown. You know, like we, we with, uh, I think she'll be coming out here next month. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's coming uh, out really And Jodie yeah. Foster, July. I don't know if any of you heard of her, but she's like <laughs> in that too. And it's, uh, it's been a busy year, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And then doing all that, go back to shoot Second Season of Atlanta. I was yeah. like, I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> but it's great, man. It's like, you can't, you can't beat that. You what is really the most can't. exhausting part of your job? 
all these different people that I'm playing. I was, like, there was one moment that I was filming three movies at one time, and like I would go on set, and I was like, "Who am I today? Mm -hmm. Like, who? Who? Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Cool. That's who. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. But it's it, there is no uh, downside to it. I, I was able to play with all some, with some of the greats, man. It was really great. Uh, we have a, a question from Twitter. Alicia on Twitter says, "I think you're one of the best dressed men on TV." Wow. Do you have any style icons? Oh. Uh, you're clearly hers. So. I mean. Uh, I, I, you know what? Uh, I don't know because I think I get dressed in the dark most of the time, so I don't know. That's like, so what, not true. Nah. Look at all your accessories right now. I mean, I mean, you know what you're doing with that. I don't know. You matched your ring and your necklace. I mean, I could learn they from you. They came as a set. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I just I don't, I, I, because I, I'm spending so much time in, in Alfred's skin. You uh -huh. know what I mean? Like, I don't dress like that. I don't really get to flex like that that often. And um. I, I like being able to be comfortable, you know. I'm a bigger mm -hmm. dude. I don't want to be walking around like looking like I'm like getting my blood pressure taken because I'm wearing something. <laughs> so, like, I just like to be comfortable. I just like to like blur the lines of like what style is. So it's just something I've always done. It's just mm -hmm. something I like. So thank you. Do you have a style icon? Uh, you know what? I got a few, man. Um, you know, I'm not gonna lie. Donald's style is really dope mm -hmm. as well. And um, you know, uh. <laughs> it's yeah, Jesus. Uh, I've got quite a few. I'm trying to think. I mean, I don't know. I like have my own personal kind of style. Mm -hmm. you know, I ain't trying to put nobody else on right now. Mm -hmm. like, it's, like, it's like my style. Lenny Kravitz. I'm not gonna lie. Oh my God. Lenny Kravitz is the yeah. only man I know that can wear like turquoise and silver and then throw a blanket on. Mm -hmm. And then you're just that like blanket. that is the dopest style <laughs> I've ever seen. So thank you, Lenny, for being a pioneer, man. My favorite was his trousers that split. I was like, oh, my favorite hey, outfit of Lenny Kravitz's. Hey, and even that was accessorized, I think. I was like, God, that man is amazing. <laughs> it's great. What is it? Do you have like a different pressure uh, getting dressed for the red carpet? You know, is that a new thing altogether? You know, uh,. I just recently had to do the Tonys, yeah. you know what I mean? And, uh, you look good, by the way. Thank you very much. I was like, oh, Vogue wants to follow me for the Tonys. Oh, my <laughs> God. Uh, Anna Wintour, if I don't make her happy, then you might as well just kill me. Uh, but it was fun because I went in and I told him, I was like, I want to do something very unconventional. Mm -hmm. I don't want to wear a regular black tux. I'd like to do. I, and like, I just went in and remember, I was like, green. Green is the color I want. And they're like, what? I was like, yeah, that, I think I just feel green. <laughs> and so they, like, came up with this really good mesh of this aquamar. It was really dope what they did. So, uh, and they let me keep my own personal flair with it. So I'm very grateful to them for that. So thank you. Um, so we have talked about your nominations, but what does that mean in terms of opening doors for other projects and people hearing about you? How much of a help is that? It's terrifying, actually, because <laughs> there's an exposure that you have that you didn't necessarily know you wanted. Yeah. Because uh, everyone keeps screaming at me about EGOT, EGOT, EGOT. Yeah. And I never even thought about the EGOT. Which is terrifying. So yeah. explain the EGOT. So EGOT know. basically is uh, it's very rare. It's a... Uh, it's, um, it's a, I'm testing you. Yeah, okay. So I'm trying to find. It's literally when an actor wins an Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, and a Tony. Mm -hmm. And it's very rare. Or even being recognized by any of them. So I got nominated for an Emmy. I have a Grammy because of Book of Mormon. Mm -hmm. And then I got a Tony nomination. Oh my so God. all I'm missing is the O. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> I'm like, Is that why you've done, like, eight films over I the next mean, two years? I didn't years. even think just about like, it. I was, just, I was just like, I'm working and money is nice. Uh, but, like... It's crazy that I'm that close, you know yeah. what I mean? And, 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 and people just keep screaming EGOT at me, and, I'm, and now I'm starting to think it's a, a slur, kind of. I'm like, you, 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 don't EGOT me. Uh, but it's nice. It's really nice to know that my peers are giving me that recognition, mm -hmm. man. So it's all about the O game now. Yeah. I'm like, got to get the O game. got to get the O. Which film do you think is going to be acting that I'm, to you? First of all, I've worked with so many Oscar winners at I this know. point that I feel like I should just rub them and just be like, so it's going to work out for me. I don't know. I I, I don't know. I, I just want to continue to just keep doing work that, that really matters to me mm -hmm. and keep championing for these characters that people don't necessarily think they should care about. Mm -hmm. I think that that's been my greatest testament of what I can do is, like, go out there and tell these stories of these people that you don't normally see reflected, <laughs> you know, that, that you wouldn't normally allow in your living rooms or you wouldn't normally go and, like, check up on. It's, like, something that I love to do to be the champion for those, for those cats and, and to... To keep telling stories that that matter about them. I mean, it's, it's I mean, because it's very easy for you to see a guy with a, a polo and a gold chain, and then he says he's a rapper, and you want to turn your back on him. But mm -hmm. at the same time, he's he's your cousin too. Yeah. He's your friend too. He's somebody that you definitely know. So I just want to keep playing characters like that. 
So what is next in the pipeline for you after everything has come out that you're working on after Atlanta Series 3? Yeah. What else have you got coming up? A vacation, hopefully. <laughs> I'm good. I'm so damn tired. <laughs> it's like I would really like to just get like on a pontoon boat somewhere <laughs> and just like chill out. So like hopefully I can rest, but... yeah. If you, the moment I rest, no I'm afraid I'm going to miss something. Are you like, afraid to say no to things at the moment? I don't think it's a fear of saying no. It's it's just, it's I don't know. Like The momentum of what's going on right yeah. now is really great because that's the thing that scares me. Everyone's like, you're having a moment. And I'm like, I don't want a damn moment. I want a movement. That's yes. what I want. I want to make this something that like sustains and keeps going. Mm -hmm. So it's like, if I take a break, then I might. Just, but then also, I don't want to develop narcolepsy either because like, <laughs> you know, I'm tired. Get so I'm hoping that I can get, already. I'm telling you, man, I'm like, just give me just give me just give me an equity cot it'll be great i just <laughs> sleep right there and so it's, but it's been good man i went trader for the world i'm so so glad <laughs> thank you so much for joining us i'm afraid that is oh, all it's we've all got good. time thank for. you for having You're me wonderful. thank you all man seriously thank, thank you thank you give it up for <laughs> brian thanks. thanks everybody Okay, so Atlanta Robin season, you've got to catch it. So it premieres on Sunday on Fox at 10 p.m. 10 p.m. Sunday. Don't forget that, everybody. <laughs> right. You got that in your diaries. You've got it in your diaries. Yes, put so, it down. Thank you so much, thank Brian, you. Tyree, Henry. <laughs> All right, thank thanks. you. Thanks.